Hi, I'm Denise. Thank you for watching my video. Today I want to give you an overview of the vowel sounds in English. Please be aware though that there are some variations in the way that these sounds are produced or in the way that these sounds are made by native speakers. I'm from the state of Michigan, which is in the northern part of the United States. And my accent is a fairly standard American accent, but people from different parts of the United States will pronounce some of these sounds in a slightly different way from the way that I do. So please keep that in mind, okay? That there are variations. Another thing to be aware of is that not all linguists agree with the number of vowels that exist in English. Some say there are 14 vowels, some say 15, some say 16. Today I will be presenting 14 vowels to you. Please don't confuse the vowel sounds with vowel letters. We have five vowel letters in English, and we use those letters to write words. The vowel letters are A, E, I, O, U. These are the letters, the letters that we use to write words. But each of these letters can make more than one sound. So altogether, since they are all making more than one sound, altogether we have either 14, 15, or 16 vowel sounds, okay? So, I will be talking about the sounds today and not the letters. When I write the vowel sounds, I will write the sound inside two slashes, okay? Like this, for example, this. This is the sound OO. And I know it's the sound because I have it, I have the two slashes here. If I'm talking about the letter U, then I will not use the slashes. I would write the letter U like this. So this is the sound U, this is the letter U. This is the sound E, this is the letter I. So again, if I write, if I'm talking about the sound, I will write it inside two slash marks, like this. If I'm talking about a letter, I will write it like this, okay? And I will be using the symbols from the International Phonetic Alphabet. When we talk about vowels, we should be aware of different parts of our mouth and what they are doing and what position they are in. So the first part of our mouth that we should be aware of is our tongue. We should know how high our tongue is in our mouth, and also which part of the tongue is at that height. So if this is my tongue, for example, we can talk about the very end of it or the very tip. Is the tip high in the mouth? Or is it the front of the tongue? Just inside the tip is the front part. Is that the part that's high in our mouth? Or is it the next part? Is it the center of the tongue? Or is it the back of the tongue? So I've written up here, tip, front, center, back. So which part of our tongue is at which height in our mouth? So how high is the tongue? We should also be aware of what our lips are doing. Our lips, are they spread, rounded, or open? If the lips are spread, that means that they, they are, my mouth is wide. The lips are spread wide apart. If they are rounded, they look something like this. So they make a circle, rounded. If my lips are open, the, my mouth might look something like this. So different vowel sounds have the lips in different positions. So we need to be aware of whether our lips are spread, rounded, or open. And they might be a combination of these as well. We also should be aware of our muscles. Are they tense or are they relaxed? If they're tense, that means that they're tight in my mouth. And if they're not tense, then they are relaxed. So when we talk about vowels, we should be aware of these things. Here's a vowel chart. It looks a little messy, but I'll try to explain it to you. Okay? So here goes. First of all, I said that I would be using the International Phonetic Alphabet. So these are the symbols, the phonetic symbols, for each of the vowel sounds, okay? 
Um, I also said that the position of our tongue is very important. Well, this chart shows different positions of the tongue. So if we go across here, we're actually talking about which part of the tongue we're using, or which part of the tongue is important to the production of this sound. So here, this refers to the front part of the tongue. Okay, remember that picture I made? We had the tip, the front, the center, and the back of the tongue. Okay, so these three words up here refer to which part of the tongue is important for this sound. So the front of the tongue is important when producing these vowel sounds. Okay? The center of the tongue is important when producing this sound. And the back of the tongue is important when producing these sounds. This sound here, some linguists put it in the center and some put it in the back. It's kind of between the two. Some speakers might make it more of a center vowel sound. Some might make it more of a back vowel. So I tried to put it between the two. It's actually, I guess I have it in back, but it, it, it's kind of, it should be between the two, okay? So we know which part of the tongue, front, center, or back, is important in making each of these sounds. But we also need to know where in our, in our mouth that part of the tongue is. So the tongue can be high in our mouth, it can be in the middle of our mouth, or it can be low. So you, we can move our tongue around, right? So this shows, this says high. So these vowels across here are high vowels. That means that the tongue will be high in the mouth. But it's not the entire tongue, it's just the front of the tongue. So these are high front, well these two are high front vowels. So the front of my tongue will be high in my mouth. These two are high back vowels. So the back of my tongue will be high in my mouth. Then we have middle. So these vowels here will have the tongue position in the middle of the mouth. And for these two, they are front vowels. So the front of the tongue will be about in the middle of my mouth. For this one, this is a back, middle, or, or center vowel. So for this one, the back of my tongue will be about in the middle of my mouth. This one again, it kind of fluctuates. Some linguists put it in middle, some put it in low. It's really pretty low. I, I tried to put it low, but I needed room for this other stuff. Okay, so this one is mostly low, but notice it's between middle and low. Then we have low. So for this sound, which is a front vowel, we have the front of our tongue low in our mouth. For this sound, for this one especially, we have the center of our tongue low in our mouth. Okay? So again, this is front, center, back, which part of our tongue is important. This is high, middle, low, where in our mouth that part of the tongue is, whether it's high in our mouth, in the middle, or low in our mouth. Then I have this part in red, spread, rounded, and open. That means the vowels on this side tend to have the mouth spread, the lips are spread. So these red words are about the mouth or the lip position. So again, on this side, the lips are spread. On this side, the lips are rounded. So this sound, for instance, is ooh. Notice my lips are rounded, ooh. For this sound, it's E. Notice my lips are spread. E. So we have spread, E, rounded, U. So everything on this side is going to have somewhat rounded lips. Everything on this side will have somewhat spread lips. But then we also have at the bottom, the mouth is more open. So I can start up here with my lips very spread, and I can move on down the chart, and as I move down, my mouth is becoming more open. So I start spread, but watch me go down the chart. E, I, A, E, E. So my mouth, my mouth is open, right, for 
Eh. My lips don't look spread, but I wanted to put this here because you can see the difference between eh, with my mouth open, and aw. Oh. My mouth is open here too, isn't it? Aw. Oh. But my lips are rounded. So, eh, aw, oh. eh, aw. Oh. So, even though my mouth is open here, I still wanted you to think of the lips as being somewhat spread, eh, so that you could distinguish that between the rounded, aw, oh. okay? So, this side is spread, this side is rounded. Now, when we go down the chart, this one, this is E, E, my lips are very spread, E. Now, I'm exaggerating a little bit, E. When I pronounce an entire word, I may not spread my lips quite that much, but when we're looking at the individual sounds and when we're practicing the individual sounds, it's a good idea to go ahead and exaggerate so you can feel the movement, you can feel what your mouth is doing. It's very important to know that, to feel that E, this is spread, but this is rounded, this is OO. Ooh, e, ooh, e, ooh. So it's okay to exaggerate these sounds and these movements when you're practicing. It, it, it will help you to, to really feel what your mouth is doing, to feel what your tongue or your lips are doing, and to begin to understand the differences between these sounds. So go ahead and exaggerate, okay? All right, as I go down though, I have E. When I move to this sound, so my tongue is high in my mouth. And it's the front part of my tongue. So it's not the very tip. Okay, remember I had tip, front, center, back. It's not the very tip. If this is my tongue, it's not the very tip. It's, it's the front part. The tip is really touching on, on all of these, really. The tip is touching my lower front teeth on the inside. So if my tip is down a little bit, it's the front part of my tongue just behind the tip that is being raised. So that's the part that is high in my mouth. So it's not the tip. I don't go like, like that to put the tip up. The tip is down, but the front is up. So the front part of my tongue is high in my mouth for E. E. The tip is down behind my teeth. The front is going to be raised a bit in my mouth. If is almost in the same position, but notice what happens to the sides of my mouth when I move from E to I. The sides of my mouth will relax. So E, I, E, I. Notice that I relaxed when I got to the second sound. The tongue is about in the same position. It's still high. The front of my tongue is still high in my mouth. It's a little bit lower for I. That's why it is, bef is below E in the chart, but they're about in the same spot. So a big difference is that E, this first sound, E, is a tense vowel. That means my muscle, the muscles in my mouth and, and my jaw, the muscles are tight. If I say E, I can feel. Put your thumb under your chin. E, E, you can feel something pushing against your thumb. E, E. And you should be able to feel the tenseness, the tightness in your mouth. Then when I move to I, the second one, I relax. Everything is relaxed. So I'm going to move from E, I. E, if I touch here, E, it's tense. I can feel the tightness. Sorry, E. Then I move down to I, E, I. And my mouth, my mouth relaxes, the sides go down. I don't feel the tenseness here. So E is a tense vowel. I is, a, we call it lax. It's a lax vowel, which means relaxed. The muscles are relaxed, okay? Then we have A. A. A is also a front vowel, but it's the middle part of my tongue that rises, that goes up. A and eh are, have a similar mouth position. They're both front, mid, front vowels. But as with these two, we have a tenseness difference here. A 
is a tense vowel, so the muscles are tense in my mouth. If I say A, I can feel the, the pushing on my thumb here, A, and I just relax the sides of my mouth, A, A, well, A, 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 A. You should be able to see the sides of my mouth just coming down a little bit when I move from A, A to A, okay? So this is tense, this is lax or relaxed. Then we have a, a. So it's still a front vowel, so the front of my tongue is important, but it's low in my mouth. Notice my jaw is opening too. We have open at the bottom, so I said as we go down, these bottom vowels are, are going to have the mouth more open. A, a, a. Okay, my mouth is open. A. So watch my mouth movement as I go down. I'm going to go this way. E. I. A. E. A. E. I. A. E. A. E. I. A. E. A. So notice my mouth is opening more as I go down here. Okay, let's take a look at the back vowels. And again, this one could be center or back. Okay, so I kind of have it in the middle. Okay, this one, these on this side are going to have the lips rounded. Now, at the top of the chart, just like on this side, the mouth is going to be more closed. As I go down, the mouth is going to be more open. So here, my lips are very rounded. Ooh. And they're almost closed, too. There's, there's not a big opening here. Ooh. Ooh. That is the word, the sound is, is in the word boot. Ooh. If I, and that's a tense vowel, so the muscles are tight. If I then relax my muscles, I have uh, uh. Ooh. Uh. Ooh. Okay, so the lips are still rounded, but the difference between those two is the relaxing. Then we have O, oh, O. Oh. Notice my lips are still rounded, but my mouth is open a little bit more than for O. See how much of an opening is here for the first sound? O. There's not much at all. When I get down here, O. Oh. Oh, my mouth is open a little bit more, okay? But the lips are still rounded. This is ah, ah. So again, my lips are still rounded, but my mouth is opening more because I'm moving down to the bottom of the chart. Ah. So we have ooh, uh, oh, ah, ooh, uh. O, A, okay? U, A, O, A. And we have this one here. This is A, A. So with this one, um, my lips are not rounded, okay? It's not, it's not bad, because I tried to make it in the center here. And my mouth is open. Ah, ah, and it's really the center part of my tongue, which is rising up a little bit, okay? We also have another vowel, it's called schwa. It is a center vowel, goes about here, and with this vowel, the center of our tongue rises just a little bit to about the middle of our mouth but very little. And our mouth, this is a schwa, is about halfway from the top, so the mouth is not really spread, it's not really open. Our mouth is really just open a little bit. Uh, uh. And there's really not much movement. The tongue rises just a little bit in the center of our mouth. And a key word for that would be the word but. 
So this is, uh, uh, my mouth is a little bit open. Some speakers might open the mouth a little bit more. Uh, uh, but I can make that sound really by hardly opening my mouth. Uh, uh, and the tongue is moving just a little bit. So the center of my tongue is rising just a little bit in the middle of my mouth. We also have key words, which I have written here in blue. These are words that you can use to help you remember these sounds. So this is C. It uses the E sound. Sit. It uses I. Say. Uses A. Set. It has a. Sat has a. But has a. Boot has u. Book has u. No has o. Saw has a. Not has a. So you can use these words, written in blue, to help you remember what these key sounds sound like. Also, if you look up words in a dictionary, and once you are familiar with these key words and the sounds that they make, when you see these sounds in a dictionary, it will be easier for you to remember how to make that sound, because you already know the key word that has that sound in it. And a note about using dictionaries. Uh, different dictionaries use different symbols. Some of them use the same symbols that I have here. Some of them use many of the same symbols, but not all of the same symbols. Some of them might use completely different symbols. It really depends on which dictionary you're using. So what you need to do is check the symbols that are used in your own dictionary. Whatever dictionary you're using, in whatever dictionary you're using, you need to check those symbols and see what the key words are. So if they, maybe they have a different symbol which makes the same sound as in the word no, which makes the same O sound. So you need to be aware of that so that when you're learning the pronunciation of a word, you are, you understand what, what the symbols refer to, what sounds those symbols refer to. <clears throat> Let me say these sounds with their key words. E, C, I, sit, A, say, E, set, A, set, A, but, A, not, U, boot, U, Book. O. No. Ah. Uh, saw. We have three other vowel sounds that I'll show you. Here are three other vowel sounds we have. These vowel sounds are sometimes called complex vowels or diphthongs. They are made up of the sounds of two other vowels, but they are joined very closely together. We start with one sound, and we glide into the next sound. This one is I. I. So we start with the A, uh, and move into I, and it sounds like I. I. Hi. Ow. 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 Oi, oi, boy. This was an overview of the vowel sounds in English. If you'd like to see how each individual sound is made, if you want to see some more details about each individual sound, and if you want to see some other words or hear some other words that use these sounds, please take a look at my other videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.